Hey guys, we are back with another Middle Earth Monday and as I promised you guys last week, this is part two of the Rohan Cavalry video. Last week I showed you guys how to paint a bunch of different colored horses and today I'm going to tackle the riders that go on top of them. I'm going to do three because I did three horses last week and I want to see them all with the riders on top. So I'm going to do an archer, a spearman and a hand weapon, so a guy wielding an axe all painted up and then stuck to the horse at the end so you can see the final result and um, if you watched last week's video you remember i talked about it looking they, the horses didn't look great because they were missing the riders it was like looking at half a miniature well after painting up the riders on top gluing them on i'm super pleased with how the first three uh rohan riders look and i'm excited to get stuck into more of them in the near future before I get into that, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of my patrons. Right, you guys, I would not be able to keep doing what I am doing. If you're interested in getting involved in that, there are links below. You get things like access to a private Discord server and an extra video every single week. 52 extra videos a year is not half bad for a patronage. Okay, with that malark out of the way, let's get painting some Rohan cavalry. Okay, and just like last week, the three horses that I did in all the different schemes, I definitely wanted to see... Um, a mounted guy on each of them by the end of the video so I decided to paint up three Rohan cavalry in this video one with a bow one with a spear and one with an axe and a hand weapon um, just to give you all the variations that you can possibly have with uh, your Rohan cavalry uh, they got their normal coat of chaos black and then the coat of gray seer over the top of that and then we jumped in with the contrast paints so Creed camo is used for all of the green cloth which there's quite a lot of in Rohan cavalry now, I know, I don't know whether you've been following along with the series of all my Lord of the Rings videos, but I know I've said this before with the idea of Lord of the Rings models being um, basically like potato models. Um, I love them. I'm not in any way, shape or form saying that they are bad models. I think there's a charm to Lord of the Rings models that I will always respect and love. But these are all like single cast press molds. So all the details bleed into each other. So it is like the painter's discretion to try and find the, the gaps and the breaks in certain areas, like where one set of robes ends and goes into another, the legs go into the torso, you know, that kind of thing. So just be aware of that when you're painting and give yourself a break. These are not going to be Primaris Marine, you know, perfectly edged miniatures. We use Agro's Dunes for any of the softer cloth. Uh, pants on the arms, uh, blonde hair if they have those. Uh, Gorgrunt of Fur was then brought in for all the leathers, so the straps. Some guys wearing leather chest armor, some people are wearing chainmail. You just basically got to find all the different parts. And then they also have their kind of knee or shin armor as well. Wildwood was then brought in as a darker brown contrasty color, and that was just for their boots. I think it's basically all I did with this color is their darker boots. Oh, and the saddle. So as you can see, a little bit of the saddle is between our legs. I wanted to match them with the saddles that I painted on the horses. So Wildwood got coated there. After I moved in with Gulliman and Flesh Contrast for the skin, these guys are actually all wearing gloves, which makes sense. So it's just uh, faces. And the first guy I grabbed was 90% beard. So I decided to grab another guy to show you the skin going on. From here, it was time to move over to metallic. So we went into a dark silver and painted in all the metallic pieces that need to be that. So there's some chain mail, the head of the axe, certain parts of helmets. Um, but I would recommend you uh, open up a reference picture for some Rohan Cavalry on the Games Workshop website. And you'll see that some of the helmets are like half silver trim, half kind of bronze trim. So for those bronzy bits, I went for the Retchby Armor Gold and applied that. So like the armored bit in the center of all the shield is gold and a few other bits like that. Okay, with all the base coats applied, it's time to move over to the shade. So Seraphim Sepia was then applied to the entire miniature. Every single last bit of it was shaded down. And if you're wondering how I painted the horse heads on the shield, I just didn't paint them. So they are the uh, Gracier um, base spray. I was just careful when I was high on base painting in the rest of the shields not to hit it. And that would leave us with a nice base coat color for the, uh, the motifs. Once that contrast is dry, it's time to go in with a light bit of layering. So we definitely want to leave that shaded down contrast in all the dark recesses of the miniature. But for all the raised areas, we're going to highlight it. So we're going to start with Wa Flesh and highlight up all of those green cloth areas. You don't have to go crazy with this. Even in the Palnor Fields box set, you're going to be painting 24 of these miniatures. 12 mounted and 12 on foot. So... You want to get them done fast to a nice standard. Don't be fretting over every crease and every fold. 
just do it as much as you need to make the miniature look nice and then move on. There's so many miniatures in this box set to get through and I'm sure a lot of you like me has a huge backlog of Lord of the Rings miniatures that we need to get through. We're definitely not going to be faffing around trying to get competition level paint jobs on all the miniatures. More and fine brown is then used for all of those soft leather bits. So the scar of a sword, top of this guy's helmet is leather chest armor, all his belts and buckles, the haft of a spear or his axe with a bow, all gets highlighted with that. Iron hand steel was then brought in to highlight and layer up all of the metallic parts of this miniature. That includes silver and gold. These little touch highlights work a treat for, like I said, doing the gold as well, giving you that bright highlighted area. You don't have to go crazy. See how quickly I did that and moved on to the helmet. A few touch highlights. Move along. More gas bone was then used for all those softer materials. So like I said, there's trousers uh, between his armors on his arms. And of course, if he has any of that blonde hair you want to highlight, you can use the more gas bone for that as well. Obviously their quivers are basically wrapped up fabric. Cadian flesh tone was then used to very quickly add some tiny touch highlights to the exposed skin on the riders. Like I said, there's not a lot of exposed skin on Rohan miniatures. They're fairly wrapped up miniatures. Pallid witch flesh was then brought in to highlight the shield designs. Now the shield designs can tend to be a little bit different. Some of them can be, instead of being green, can be red. I'm not sure what the significance of that is, if it's a different Rohan house or whatever. I'm not 100% sure. So I'm going to keep it all uniform across my miniatures in the Palinor Fields box sets. They all have the white motifs, gold in the center, green shields. And when you finished off that, you are left with your three finished Rohan cavalry miniatures. And I am super excited at this point to plop them onto the horses and see what they look like as a trio of painted Rohan cavalry. Like I said before, Rohan or Lord of the Rings horses have always been something that has terrorized me. And I haven't been able to get any miniatures that I like the look of. And I guess that ends today because I'm super proud of my finished Rohan Riders. I have a couple of still images of the finished models coming up now. I hope you guys enjoyed this like two part series on how to paint Rohan. Uh, you can of course use all of the steps I did for these uh, mounted guys for the on foot version as well. I don't think I'm going to do a on foot version of these guys as a video because it would be the same video again. Um, in slightly different poses so uh, let me know what else in the Pelnor Fields box that you would like to see or in fact any other Lord of the Rings miniatures you want me to do on the series soon. Okay guys and there we have it three Rohan cavalry are completely finished and I love how they turn out I have another nine more to go from the Pelnor Fields box set they do give you 12 and then 12 infantry in case the horses die and they have to dismount so there's quite an, a lot uh, more Rohan miniatures to paint up and I will be tackling them very soon. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a like. Let me know in the comments below what the next thing out of the Pelnor Fields box set you want to see is and I will get on that as soon as possible. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. It means the world to me. And um, yeah, that's pretty much everything. So thanks very much for sticking around to the end. I'll see you in the next one.